Hey guys, my name is Michael Sipos and I'm the UF IFAS Extension Florida Sea Grant Agent in Collier County. And today we're going to fillet one of the most beautiful fish there is in the Gulf, the Red Snapper. So this fish is important recreationally, commercially, in the for hire sector. It's delicious and it is uh, disputed over uh, pretty frequently. So watch the video, read the description to learn more about this fish. I include a lot of facts in the descriptions that I don't talk about in the video. And uh, please, please, please uh, do the evaluation survey. If you watch this video, let us know how we did, um, what we can change, what you'd like to see. Uh, it helps me do my job and justifies the time I put into creating these videos, going out there, harvesting different fish and researching them. So I'm going to go ahead and move the camera closer so you can get a good look at my hands and we will get started. Thanks so much. Okay guys, so let's get started. So to give you an idea of scale of our beautiful red snapper, um, this fish was about 22 and a half inches maximum total length. So that's a pinched tail measurement and that's used to measure these fish for regulations and it weighs about 6.1 pounds and this is a northern red snapper sometimes you'll hear them called the American red snapper or the ARS and um, the world the Florida record for this fish is 46 pounds 8 ounces out of Destin Florida and that was caught in 1985 the world record for this fish is 50 pounds 4 ounces so that that fish must have been awesome and huge and pretty and the biggest one I ever caught was about 27 pounds and that that was a huge huge fish for me so I can just imagine what that looked like so um, give you some tips on identifying this over other snappers I know some people who are avid fishermen will be like oh I could easily tell a red snapper apart that might be true but um, there are a lot of snapper out there that are red and sometimes I'll post a picture of some fish on my you know media and People will say, nice red snapper, but that might be a mangrove that looks a little bit reddish. So in, in the snappers and around Florida, there is the queen snapper, which is bright red, the silk snapper that's bright red, the black fin snapper that's red, the vermilion snapper that's red, and the wenchman snapper that's red. And then there's also snapper that could be slightly red. So the mangrove snapper, um, I've seen them slightly red, especially on ice. Kubera snapper, slightly red. Mutton snapper, very similar sort of shape as this fish. They could be slightly red. The dog snapper, the mahogany snapper, um, those could be slightly red. And then there's the fish that aren't snappers that are red, like the Creole fish, the soldier fish, the hogfish that sometimes people call hog snapper, which are actually a uh, wrasse and the part of uh, in the family uh, uh, black, uh, <laughs> the family labradae, and uh, snappers are in the family lugenidae. And uh, then there's even a fish called the glass-eyed snapper. That's not actually a snapper. Sometimes you hear them called the big eye toro, but those are also red. So tips on identifying this fish over different kind of snappers. Uh, the red snapper will have this pointed anal fin right over here and uh, like the mangrove, the kubera, the dog, the mahogany, they won't have that but the mutton snapper actually has this pointed anal fin but they'll have different coloration and the mutton snapper will actually have some like blue around the face um, and a dot in the back but juvenile red snappers will also have a dot on the back over here. They, they lose it about 14-16 inches in length but it'll look like a dot right here and even the, the mahogany snapper will have a dot right there so don't rely on the dot alone uh, then this snapper has a flat tail right while uh, the queen snapper and the vermilion snapper they'll have a very fork tail so look for that look for body shape this snapper is very wide while some other snappers might be elongated um, you know like the like the queen snapper um, so and then look at eye color these have like a reddish eye, um, but then there's the black fin snapper that look very similar to this. They have a little black mark right here by their pectoral fin. They have a little bit more yellowish eye, um, and, uh, and also the silk snapper also have like a, a more yellow eye out there. Um, know where you're fishing. So if you're fishing underneath the mangroves in southwest Florida, you're probably not going to catch this fish. That would be very, 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 very rare. 
But if you're fishing in 100 foot in Southwest Florida, you might catch red snapper. But in the panhandle, you could be fishing off of a pier inside a bay and they've even caught red snapper there. So, you know, know the fish in your area and your chances of catching, you know, a different kind of species. Familiarize yourself with the local species. Um, then uh, look, there's, <laughs> you could look at the teeth these things have these villiform teeth that are small and tight together, and then they have these small little canines. But then if you're looking at like a mangrove or a kubera or something like that, they're gonna have these giant chompers, these giant canines, right? So small, close together, pointy teeth. Um, that's a, that, that could be a red snapper. There, I'm sure there's plenty of other snappers that have that, but it wouldn't be a mangrove or a kubera. Um, and then, uh, really just just sort of I guess <laughs> look at the color and I mean I hate to say that but these will have like a slight counter shading they're pretty much just red with that exception of a dot when they're smaller um, you know other snappers might have more of like a pattern on the face so you know look at that but let's go ahead and get started and uh, start filleting this fish incision across the back. I'm going to go about a half inch deep, go all the way up to the head, and go all the way down. So these fish are delicious. The yield on them might not be as great as maybe some of the grouper species that might be a little bit more meaty. They have a big head portion, but some people will uh, collect the collars, uh, the throat of the fish, and maybe we could try that uh, with this one. Here, cutting down. So this fish is talked about a lot. Um, there's a lot of different management, uh, just sort of agencies out there. So I'm not going to go into the regulations because depending on where you live in the Florida and what kind of uh, industry you're in, if you're in for hire, if you're a recreational angler, if you're a charter fisherman, uh, those rules might vary even between uh, state waters, Gulf waters, the South Atlantic. Um, those are all different regulatory bodies. Sometimes they'll, they'll agree with each other and other times there might be a different state regulation than there is a federal regulation. And these often change from year to year. So pay attention to those regulation updates. So this fish, uh, <laughs> the, the generic range of a lot of these Western Atlantic fish will be from uh, from the Massachusetts to Brazil, but they, they aren't really found too often north of uh, the Carolinas. So it's a beautiful fillet. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side. And they're seen in anywhere from 33 to 620 feet. So like I said, just depending on where you're at is your, your chances of finding them in different depths and different habitats. I'm an avid diver, I'm an avid fisherman. I've fished Louisiana, Destin, uh, the Keys, and I've seen red snapper in all sorts of different environments. Um, if you're in our area in Southwest Florida, You'll see them in that 100 foot range past that. Um, but if you're in, up north, you'll be finding them a lot shallower. I've, I've fished in Steenahatchee and seen them in 30 foot, but 30 foot might be a, a lot further offshore than it is uh, 30 foot off of Tampa. You know, I've seen them in 60 foot in Tampa on artificial reefs and wrecks. I've seen them over sand. I've seen them over mud. And uh, pretty much, they, they can occur in a lot of different environments. And they're really disputed over because everybody sort of wants a piece of them. Um, they're, you know, the shrimpers uh, were, uh, they, they, they trawl over habitat where juvenile red snapper live. So it was disputed on what the shrimping industry might do to them. Um, the recreational sector is huge. And uh, there's, in 2020, there was 15.1 million pounds a red snapper allocated in the Gulf, uh, and that was split up between all those sectors. So the commercial, um, the recreational, I think got seven that seven million three hundred ninety nine pounds, and that was a whole weight fish, and that sort of determines when these seasons close or open. So I got my two fillets here. I'm gonna go ahead and skin them. I'm 
going to put them to the edge of the table, get my knife, uh, hover over the skin. I don't like getting super flush to them because you might get that red on the fillet. So I like to hover maybe a millimeter or two above that skin and do a sawing pulling motion with my hands. Uh, red snapper, eat a variety of prey, mostly small fish, crustaceans, squid, octopus, and uh, they are, they reproduce, they're sexually mature at about two years old, and about, that corresponds with 12 to 16 inches in length. Uh, the max age of this fish, they think they can live up to uh, uh, 40, 50 years old, and FWC actually has an individual aged at 57 years old, so they're pretty long lived. Uh, but they're pretty fast growing and they're very fecund. They, um, uh, they, they produce a lot of offspring, but it, that, that, that just depends on the size of the fish. So this one actually, as you can see here, that's, that's a female. So that's, that's a little bit of egg tissue right over there. So depending on where you're at in the, the fishery and then the state geographically depends on when they spawn. In uh, Southwest Florida, they, they spawn more so in uh, August through September, and then in Northwest, the Northwest population more of that, uh, that June through August. So they're a summertime spawning fish. They lay, uh, they, they, they have pelagic eggs that float in the water column and they're externally fertilized. And they'll hatch in about a day, 20, 27 hours or so. And they'll float around in that larvae form for about 20 days before they settle and they look more like a fish and start looking, uh, you know, associating themselves with the bottom. And a female red snapper can produce up to 9 million eggs. However, uh, the, the reproduction isn't necessarily uh, correspond, it, it corresponds with the size. So larger fish will not produce, uh, two times larger fish won't produce two times the amount of eggs. It's, it's exponentially larger. So one 24 inch female can, which is about eight years old, uh, can produce the amount of, the same amount of fish as 212 17 inch females which are about five years old um you know i, I I've, <laughs> I've, I've taken a lot of otoliths out of them which are the aging structures and i've heard a lot of teachers and uh, educators out there wondering how to take those out so I'll, I'll go ahead and try to attempt my hand at taking out otoliths of this red snapper so those are the inner ear bones of the fish which are used to age the fish and they have these sections on them called increments or annuli in some species that are laid like rings on a tree. And these fish are notorious for having very large otoliths, uh, which doesn't like, necessarily correspond with size of fish, like a 100 pound amberjack might have an otolith like this big. While these uh, red snapper might have an otolith uh, a little bit bigger than my thumbnail, so they're easier to find for new beginners. So let me go ahead and try that out. I got this serrated knife, I'm gonna cut sort of where this uh, first notch of that gill plate is. Cut down, stuff that like the high level. Get this serrated knife. Okay, gotta keep on going down more. Keep on going down more. Okay, I heard some cracking. And there they are. So you can't really see them if you don't know what you're looking for, but they're pretty. And they're, <laughs> this is a fisheries biologist dream right here, is looking at these giant otoliths. So I'm gonna take them out, boom. Look how big that is. That is a beautiful otolith. And then I'm gonna take out, I could feel it. If you're having trouble finding these otoliths, if you start sort of scraping around with like different kind of, you know, utensils. I, I can see it really easily, um, but you can hear that sort of sound change. And there, that's another otolith. So if you want to make some beautiful fisheries, biology kind of earrings, if you want to show your students uh, the structures used to age fish, if you're interested in them yourself and try your hand at it, you could take these otoliths out. And these, this is a very good species to try that out with. So, uh, I love it so much. It tastes so great. I'm going to try to take out those collars. I've never done it before on this species, but uh, I'm going to try to get as much meat as possible from this fish. And uh, like I said before, uh, you can tell it's a female right there. Those are the, the gonads and you can see some of the eggs there. So to take out the collars, let me go ahead and move these fillets so they're, no, uh, they're not in the way. 
Um, I've done it before on different grouper species. Um, you can see my videos over there if you want. Um, but there is this little structure right over here. And you want to get your knife and you go underneath and then on the other side of here. And then you pop it off and sort of cut. And it sort of stops right over here before you get into like the, the, the cavity, the body cavity that has a lot of those guts and intestines there. So let's, let's go ahead and try that. It may or may not be successful. <laughs> so cutting up. Cutting down. Okay, so I pop that off. Cool, I got that one collar set. Pop this other side, and you could leave these as like a whole thing, or you could cut them into, they even called them like fish wings before I've seen them. But it's a good way of getting the most meat out of your fish as possible. Um, you know, want to be able to protect the resource and use, use all that. Cutting it here. Okay, so this is the red snapper collar. So there's a lot of great meat right in these areas. It tastes just like red snapper because it is red snapper, but the consistency is a little bit different because the muscle flakes are a little bit different, but it's a unique way of cooking this up and uh, hope you want to try that out to get the most out of your fish. And read the description to learn more about this. I, I, <laughs> this fish has plenty to learn about. And uh, thanks for watching. Please take the, the survey out there to let us know how we did. And I uh, hope you learned something. Comment, ask me questions, everything. Thanks so much, guys.